Hello everyone, I'm Bowen. Today I'm going to talk about our paper accepted in IROS SE3 TrackNet data-driven 6D post tracking by calibrating image residuals in synthetic domains. This is a joint work collaborated with Chen Tanya, Bao Zhang, and Professor Costas Bakris. First, let's look at the motivation. 6D poses of objects can assist and inform control and planning during robotic manipulation. Slippage during manipulation, especially in-hand manipulation, make directly computing 60 poses from forward kinematics unreliable. For example, on the right-hand side the image, when the hands-off happens, the 60 poses of the objects is not computable by only forward kinematics. Also, if we apply single image-based 60 pose estimation methods, they have several problems. First, they are often slow for real-time estimation. Second, they could result in jittering between neighboring frames. Third, they are challenged by significant occlusions during the manipulation. For this reason, fast and accurate 60 post tracking approaches are highly desirable. Now let's briefly talk about the previous 60 post tracking methods. The first category is the probabilistic models. However, for this type of method, usually it requires to heuristically, heuristically choose probabilistic models and also they are often computational expensive so that they need to be accelerated on a GPU. The second type of approach is the cost function optimization. However, they also require to heuristically design cost functions. Also, the formulation of convex optimization can easily suffer from the problem about local minimum. Last is the data-driven approaches. However, like in many other deep learning based approaches, Real data are usually required either for training the detector or required for fine tuning. Also, in the first approach, it is computational expensive, which prevents it from real time usage. For the deep IM work, it suffers from frequent tracking loss. Our contributions can be summarized as follows We developed a novel neural network architecture that can track 60 object poles where a smart feature encoding disentanglement technique enables more efficient symmetry real transfer. A Lie algebra representation of 3D orientations, which allows effective learning of the residual post transform given a proper loss function. We also propose a training pipeline over synthetic data, which enables us to train purely on the synthetic data, which later generalizes well to the real world data. And this dramatically reduces manual efforts in collecting and labeling videos for, track, for tracking 60 poses. Finally, we also developed a novel benchmarking dataset for 60 post tracking in the context of multiple different robotic manipulation tasks. Our problem statement is as follows. Given the input of a CAD model of the target object and the RGBD sequence and the initial object pose, we aim to estimate the 60 pose of the target object in each frame computed in real time. Here is our framework overview. At each timestamp, we first use the previously estimated pose epsilon t minus one to render the RGBD data R t minus one, and also we have the current observation O t. By sending these two inputs to the SA3 track net, it is supposed to provide us with the delta transform. Then this delta transform could be accumulated with the previous estimate, which brings us the current estimated pose. Then we do this procedure again. We use the current estimated pose to render the image, and in the next frame, we have the two observations. Sending them to the SC3 check net, this brings us the next delta transform, which enables us to accumulate further. We repeat this process again and again on the entire video sequence. Our neural network design is motivated from the prior optimization-based approaches. The goal is to look for the optimal pose that minimizes the discrepancy between the real observation at the current timestamp and the rendered image from the previous pose, where rho could be any robust function, and phi is the feature encoders. Here we represent it as neural network. Optimal relative transform is the arg minimum of this cost function. In prior works, this could be solved by taking the Taylor expansion and apply Gauss Newton optimization on top of this. Whereas in this work, we hope to learn this by the neural network. Here's the corresponding neural network design. Given an object model, we first render use, using its previous estimate, and this brings us 
the RGBD data in the previous timestamp. Also, we project using its previous estimate on the newly coming images and crop the saliency region. And this is the current timestamp. Then the two branches of image data are fed into a assignments type network where the features are later fused. Near the head of the network, the translation and rotation predictions are disentangled, and the rotation is represented in Lie algebra. Finally, the pose could, re could be recovered to the Lie group. Since our network is trained purely on the synthetic data, an additional encoder disentanglement technique is proposed to better align the domain gap. During the training stage, both inputs are synthetic data. Especially in the lower branch, the synthetic data are rendered the physically plausible domain randomization is employed to generate higher quality synthetic data. However, during the test stage, the second input now corresponds to the current image coming from the real data, while the first input is still the rendered image using the previously estimated pose. Now the domain gap only exists in the second input branch, and only 5B is responsible to capture the domain invariant features, while the 5A is always capturing the the features from the synthetic domain. Unlike single image 60 post estimation, for video based 60 post tracking, to train a deep neural network on the video data, 60 post annotation needs to be densely annotated on each frame of the video, which is non trivial in the real world data. In this work, we are, we are generating the training data in the simulation where the ground truth can come for free. Although S63 track nets encoder disentanglement helps to reduce the domain shift. There is still, however, a domain gap. But how can we further bridge the domain gap through a better dataset? In this work, we employed the idea about physically plausible domain randomization and applied it to train the video-based 60-post tracking net. Here is a comparison between the domain randomization and the physically plausible domain randomization. In the physically pl plausible domain randomization, the object's poses are, random are randomized at the beginning, and then some steps of physical simulation is applied until the stable placement of the objects on the tabletop. The textures of the background are also randomized, in addition to the lighting conditions, viewing angles of the camera poses. In the bottom row, we showed some example generated synthetic data. Here is our physically plausible domain randomization synthetic data generation pipeline. Next, we will show some qualitative results on the YCB video dataset. Here is a comparison from other state-of-art approaches on the YCB video dataset. The poses are initialized from the ground truth pose, and later, for each object, we apply each tracking method on each object individually. Please note that this video is a merged result from each individually tracked result. For the methods on the first row, we can see that this struggles from the textureless object, the large clamp. Also, since the large clamp has a weird geometry, which introduces additional difficulty for tracking it. Later, the large clamp is gradually occluded by the sugar box. You can see that, compared with other approaches, a 3 track net is able to stably provide accurate estimation, even though severe occlusion can happen. For the bleach blotter, we can also observe some difference between other approaches and ours. Here is another example. In this scene, the lighting conditions is very challenging. It introduces strong reflection on the wood block. Also, the viewing angle to the bleach blot to the bleach bottle is from the side, which is also more challenging. For the methods that rely on the depth data, the estimation of the orientation could be ambiguous, especially for the tomato can and the master chef can. Whereas, SC3 TrackNet is able to reason about the semantic information by reasoning on both the RGB and depth data. Here are the quantitative results on the YCB video. We can see that the SC3 TrackNet is able to achieve the state of art on this benchmark by using the area under the curve of ADD and ATDS metric. For the running time, SC3 TrackNet is also the fastest. It can run as fast as 90 Hz, which is far from efficient for real-time usage since common camera frequency is about 20 to 30 Hz. Overall, 
a C3 track that has a good balance of performance and running speed. Here are two figures. The left one shows the result using the ADD metric. The right one shows the result using the metric of ADDS. Under both metrics, we can clearly see that a C3 track net is able to outperform the other approaches by a large margin in both the running time and performance. Here is an interesting example from the YCB video where complete occlusion happens to the tomato can. We can see that even under such a challenging scenario, a C3 track net is able to keep track of the pose of the tomato can without any reinitialization. So far, we've been only evaluating on the YCB video datasets. For other existing datasets, there are several limitations. They can be either placing the objects statically on a tabletop while a camera is moving around to imitate a 60 post tracking scenario. However, the entire image can be leveraged to solve the trajectory of the camera from which the object's pose can be inferred. Also, sudden out-of-image plane flipping is less likely to happen. For some other datasets, the video of moving objects manipulated by human hand where the human hand and arm motions can greatly vary from those of the robots. Also, the lack of forward kinematics information differs from the real robotic manipulation scenarios. To this end, we propose the new dataset for evaluating 60 post tracking, which we call YCB in UAT datasets. To collect this dataset, we use the Yaskawa Motorman SDA on the left hand side, and the videos are collected using various any factors, including a vacuum gripper, a robotic gripper and the T42 adaptive hand. For the manipulated objects, we choose from the YCB video objects since they are widely accessible. This is the first dataset which includes real robotic manipulation tasks, three kinds of ND factors, five YCB objects, nine videos for evaluation. Ground truth poses are annotated for each frame in the video. Forward kinematics are also recorded. Camera ex extrinsic parameters are calibrated. Next, we will show some qualitative results on this YCB in UAT dataset. Notice that tracking is initialized from the ground truth pose at the first frame. Later, no reinitialization is allowed. In this experiment, we compared with RGF and particle filtering. The rendered object mask is masked blue and overlaid on the original RGB image for visualization. This is a real robotic manipulation scenario where the goal is to place the yellow mustard bottle in the gap. The object is first picked by the vacuum, then it hands over to another gripper. We can see that RGF failed very early. A C3 track net is able to provide accurate estimate from the beginning to the end without any reinitialization. Here is another example of the human robot in interaction, where the robot will hand over the cracker box to the human. Unlike filtering-based approaches, a C3 track net is able to provide very stable estimate in the neighboring frames. Here are the quantitative results on the YCB in UAT dataset using the same evaluation metrics as in the YCB video benchmark. Again, a C3 track net is able to achieve the state of the art. To summarize, in this work, we presented the AC3 track net, which achieves the state of the art performance on the YCB video dataset outperforming other approaches by considerable margins. It's also extremely fast. It outputs at 90 Hz, much more efficient than for real-time purpose. The domain gap is also effectively bridged, which allows us to train only on the synthetic data. Finally, we also published a novel benchmark for 60 post tracking collected in the real robotic manipulation scenarios, including various any factors and objects. Thank you.